Hi everyone, my name is Breeze and I currently work as a doctor in the NHS. Today I thought we could go through the online application for specialty training in the UK. I remember when I applied for my specialty training application, it was really confusing and I was pretty stressed out because there's a lot of information that they want from you and you're always kind of worried, am I doing this correctly? Is this the way it really should be? So that's why we provided a walkthrough of how you would apply for your specialty training application. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, we're gonna start off with Google because Google's your best friend. We're typing in Oriel and there it is, oriel.nhs.uk. Now if you see here guys, there's a whole new system. This is actually what you need to be clicking to proceed. So if you've already had a registered account from the old Oriel, forget about that one. You gotta register a new account and start off with the top. That's where we need to be, the medical and public health training programs because it is basically there for you to apply for the medical stuff. And we continue. Put in your deets, all the pertinent information related to you. And of course, guys, if you're worried about like, okay, well, what address do I put in if I don't live in the UK? Just put where your home address is because you're giving all that information anyway. It's not a big deal. You don't have to have a UK address in order to proceed with this training application. Please make sure you put in a valid email address and an email address that you'll be checking regularly because they can be giving you information throughout the entire application process and you don't want to miss anything. Now that you've registered your account, go ahead and log in. And what do we see but this beautiful dashboard of a new Oriel account set up. It's fantastic. So now you look around, you see a lot of things and what are you actually looking for? What you're looking for are the vacancies. Go ahead and click those vacancies and voila, look at how many things are open. It's fantastic. So many places that you can apply for training. And you see a whole list of them here. What we'll do though, for the sake of this session, is we're gonna just put in for medical and we're gonna go ahead and scroll on down to internal medicine training. And that's just the way that we're gonna proceed. It's really not that much different for anything else, but there you are guys, we're searching and ta-da. We have the information related to IMT training. If you see below, it has all the information that you'd really need to know and stuff that you pretty much already have the idea about and about your eligibility. But really, if you have any questions further related to IMT, there are links there provided that will give you a little bit more information and note when the closing date is so you don't miss out on your opportunity to apply and that the post will commence from August 2021. Okay, so again, we're going through the basics. This information is obviously taken already from the information you gave when you set up the account. Here's asking if you have a national insurance number. If you don't have one, it's not a problem. You can click no, but if you do, go ahead and provide a national insurance number and proceed on basically with the rest of the application. Scrolling on down a little bit further, if you know you want to be contacted if at work on your mobile number, by all means, give that data. You can always see, of course, where and what and how because they will put that red asterisk next to it. So. You've got your nationality, put in your information, whether or not you are a UK national, this is just checking your right to work. It doesn't matter if you don't currently have a right to work in the UK, you can always proceed onwards and apply for your visa. And then just explain what your current status is. If you're not currently in the um, UK for anything, you can explain it that way. Or if you're in a tier two visa, like many of us tend to be, you can just explain, well, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm on a tier two visa. All right, and then you've got to specify what kind of tier two visa this is. So it'll be a general, if you're all the doctors working here, um, but they'll need to know if your current post is in training. Now, you see here when it's asking about whether or not you're on a dependent or if you're on your own visa. This is because individuals who are on a dependent visa will more often than not see on their BRP that, you know what, you're not gonna be allowed to work as a doctor or a dentist in training. And if it does say this, that doesn't mean you can't apply. You can go ahead and apply, but once you get selected for this training post, what you're gonna have to do is apply for your own independent tier two visa. You cannot stay on a dependent tier two visa in that situation. Now, if you're on your own visa, you know who is sponsoring you currently, and you will obviously have the information related to your BRP that you will provide. Now, this all this information, guys, is, is not something that you have to do. You can see it's not labeled with any asterisks. It's just more about the demographics and, and census information. If you don't feel like answering these questions, you don't have to, and you can go ahead and get to the next part of this, and we'll get to basically the more important stuff, in my opinion, your employment history. This is about all your employment history, what's happening in the UK and what's happening outside of the United Kingdom. So don't think, oh, well, I don't have any employment history here. How will I proceed? It's all right. 
So what you see here is the important stuff, where you worked, where it was. And if you see here, it says if you have less than three years of employment history, you need to provide all these dates all the way back from. So let's say if you were applying today, back three years. All right. And it's really important that you know these dates. Just like when you signed up, sorry, just like when you got your GMC registration and you had to provide all these dates and explain any gaps that you had, that's essentially what you'd be doing this time as well. Do not lie. Do not try and say you were doing things that you weren't doing. Be as truthful as, be completely truthful and explain your situation. If you were still in medical school in, in any time of these three years, you have the option, of course, to put that you were in undergraduate education. And of course, if you have no employment history, which is totally fine, you just tick that box. Okay, now what they're looking to see is about your training history. Have you ever in the UK dropped or relinquished any sort of training post? Or do you currently have a national training number? Of course, guys, it's just down to you. You will know if you have this or if you don't have this. And then um, you just have to just, you know, see if there's anything further related to you in the personal details that are applicable that you have to click yes or no to. Now, regarding your GMC registration, while GMC registration is not a requirement in order to apply for the training post, you must have full GMC registration by the starting date of that post. If you do not, you will not have a post to start in because you need GMC registration in order to work as a doctor in the UK. So if you're somebody who's currently in the process, please keep that in mind that you need to have registration by that start date, otherwise you will not be able to proceed. Now the next part that a lot of us have a little bit of trouble with is your language skills and your evidence of your English language proficiency. If you've not done IELTS, if you've not had an undergrad taught in English and, you, and you've not worked in the NHS for more for two or more years, you need to provide a testimony from a UK consultant or, or supervisor that will explain your English language proficiency. It's really straightforward. It's nothing to worry about. If you have a valid IELTS course, you can just submit that. So if for some reason you have something going on that you will not be able to start as soon as you'd like or on the scheduled start date, you can apply for deferment. And there's a lengthy process associated with it. But if that's something that would fit your circumstance, by all means, apply for a deferment. Okay, as we truck along the references, guys, these don't have to be references from the United Kingdom, but they need to be people who know you, who've worked with you, right? Preferably try and get somebody you've recently worked with, but it has to be over the last three years, just as before you were giving your employment history over the last three years, this too will be over the last three years. Try and make sure whoever you choose your references are people who will respond when they are contacted and give as many details as you can related to the post that you were working in and the information for the person that you were working under so that they know what is happening. And please, 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 as a courtesy, inform the individuals that you are making as your referees so they know how to proceed. Okay, so fitness to practice again, up to you all guys, you know you, so put yes or no as applicable. Um, it's very important you read through these questions carefully and make sure you know exactly how you're answering. And then the last bit that's very, very important, confirming everything. You may you need to make sure you are meeting all the criteria that ha they have put there so that later on, if you know you proceed and that it doesn't happen and they're like, well, how come you said you had this when you didn't? Why did you agree, basically? So if we proceed from there onwards, here's where it's really important, your achievement of foundation competencies. So it could be that you completed a UKFPR internship in the United Kingdom, or maybe you did an FY2 standalone, which would have given you your foundation program certificate of completion. Otherwise, if you've not done any of these things and you're currently working in the NHS or otherwise have met the criteria for a crest form, they will ask you to upload a crest form, a valid crest form for the year that you are applying. So if you have a 2020 crest form, let's say, and you were applying in 2020 for the 2021 year, it will not be valid. You would need to have the crest form for the year that you are applying. And then all the other important stuff related to your medical degree. The medical degrees have so many names, but guys, it doesn't really matter. Whatever yours is called, go ahead and put it there. Most of us typically have an MBBS, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and select here. And then, of course, the important deets as you gave to GMC as well related to your medical degree and your medical college. All right, that doesn't apply to us. We're going to skip on down. And if you are trying to switch into IMT from another training program, if there are acceptable transferable competencies, you can mention it there. Otherwise, just give everything else a last look here and go on to your next part. Now, this is where I think a lot of people get really scared. Like, what am I supposed to write here? What, what do they really want from me? 
So you'll see in a little bit once we move on through the application, there actually is a little bit of a help that you can get from some of the tick boxes they've put where they explain how many points you get for different parts of your application process. But really, guys, you make sure you understand there's a limitation to words. Look, it says there words allowed 50, okay? So don't try and explain too much of yourself. Just give the really salient features and really important points to whatever you're talking about. I know you must have done a ton of things, but what they're really looking for are things that are relevant and, of course, current. So try and think of those things when you're filling out all of this information. And if in doubt, you can always ask around before you proceed. Just because you completed the application today does not mean you have to submit it. Take some time, go over all of these things, and really put together a strong application explaining what you've done and how you've done it and what, why you feel that because of these things that you've done, you would be a suitable candidate to proceed in this application. Of course, if you don't have anything to put there at all, you can just write NA. And that's what we'll do for the purpose of this video. And don't think just because you're writing NA that, that you won't proceed and that, you know, the world's ending. For your membership exams, while membership exams are not mandatory, it's just, it's an area that's not scored. It's just that they want to know what's happening with you. So you can say yes or no. And then if you have, again, some more questions to be answered about your commitment to specialty and other interests that you have outside. So again, guys, you have to remember that all of this will be there when you submit your application and, and you go for your interview. So whatever you're saying you're doing will need to be proved in your portfolio that you'll be bringing with you. So do not put anything that you've not done. And the same thing with training courses. I'm sure you've done a trillion training courses, but again, just put the ones that are really relevant to what you are applying for. And if this is your first job in the NHS and you're really concerned about how you would proceed, since there are so many different workshops that the GMC has, go ahead and take yes if you want to be contacted by them and you will find out how they can help you. Okay, so we're just completing all this. And this is what I was talking about, the self-assessment part of it, where you're going to be saying, do you have any of these things? Do you have any of these things that you can mention either here and then, of course, back before where you can maybe talk about it a little bit more? Undergrad degrees, additional degrees, any postgrad degrees, qualifications, achievements or prizes that you may have gotten back in medical school or throughout your your, your tenure in whatever jobs that you had after that, poster presentations, publications. And again, guys, I want to emphasize, only tick the things that you have actually done because you will be asked to provide proof of all of this in your portfolio. So as much as possible, go through all of this, see what you have, see what you can prove and whatever is relevant to what you're doing and submit all of that or tick all of that and talk about it as appropriate where it is designated for it to be talked about. And then the last bit, the most important part, please go through everything before you submit your application. So there you have it. Hopefully that walkthrough really explained what you needed to know. If you're still confused, you can always ask down below. But guys, just to be very clear, we just made this application for the sake of making the application to show you how to apply. We did not submit it. We've withdrawn the application and closed the account. So don't worry. But of course, the most important thing is to be really, really vigilant when you are applying and making sure you know exactly what you're saying and how you're saying it. Go through it, proofread it, see it for a couple of times and make sure you know it has whatever it needs to have. Make sure you don't have any spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, capitalization or punctuation errors. Those are really tiny things, but it can make a world of a difference if you're trying to explain something and it just doesn't come across. And of course, please make sure that you have all the details that you've provided in your portfolio as evidences. So. As always, please make sure if you've not already to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook and we'll see you next time.